I live in Seattle, so I knew there were some big ships with red hulls docked near downtown Seattle. Before being on the Healy, I don't think I had ever really been on a ship before. I don't know that before this project, I knew what an icebreaker was or why they existed. So we had three main goals when we started this project. One was just to tell the history of icebreaking in the United States, to capture personal histories of the men and women who have served on wind-class icebreakers, and to communicate the importance of icebreaking in the polar regions. Making this film started with doing pre-interviews. And so James called up 50 plus people and talked to them about their experience on icebreakers. We whittled it down to 22 people that we were gonna interview. The most important thing you can do is talk to people who have served on the ships. Thankfully, Rear Admiral Jeff Garrett lives in the Seattle area, so I got in touch with him really early on. We met for coffee, and in our first meeting, he handed me the manuscript for his master's thesis that was really a book on the history of icebreaking in the polar regions. We went ahead and using the information we've gotten from interviews made an outline of the way that we intend to tell the story. Armed with that treatment, we went into production. We traveled to Seattle, Washington, D.C., and the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in Connecticut. Almost everyone to a person looked back on their time on icebreakers as some of the fondest memories of their lives. I don't think I talked to anyone who said like, oh yeah, I used to serve on icebreakers and that sucked. Everyone talked about the sense of adventure, seeing the world, the camaraderie. So when we started this project, our understanding was we would not be going on an icebreaking ship. Eventually we were able to get permission for Tom to go up on Healy into the Arctic. Deciding to go on the Healy mission uh, as a filmmaker was a really difficult decision for me. I just moved to a new city with my partner and the Healy mission was going to be probably around two months. Really very limited if any contact. And before actually going on the Healy, we had been filming with sailors uh, around the country who had been on the different Coast Guard ships earlier versions that their experience, the way they told it, just sounded insane. But we talked it over and uh, I really kind of thought about why I started filming things in the first place when I was a kid. What, what was my drive to do it in the first place? And it really was, I wanted to see the world. Filming on the ship was a challenge. There's always different variables that kind of play into how do you capture what you need to capture as a filmmaker. My batteries would die pretty quick out in the cold, for example. It was negative 30, negative 35 out. And plus a wind chill, it was like negative 50, negative 60. Incredible, you know, cold temperatures I had never experienced before. My lenses would fog up all the time going from in to outside. And these were things I just had to become, you know, comfortable just switching out or doing more often than I would have otherwise. I'm flying a drone in the Arctic. When you're, when, when you're up there, your GPS isn't gonna necessarily work right. Uh, compass is going to be all kinds of messed up really because you're on a big metal ship moving and so there's no real ability to calibrate the the actual drone itself by the end of that my trip up there i 
feel like I really went through a whole another training course of how do you really pilot a drone um, in extreme environments. When we first hit ice, uh, it was a moment that I knew was going to be cool because, at least for me personally, I'd never seen anything like that. But also a lot of the sailors on that ship had never been up to the Arctic either, so they didn't know what ice breaking was really like or what it was like to actually drive a ship through, you know, feet of ice. And so that was a super exciting moment. You know, you had like 30 or 40 people up on the front of the ship looking over as we first hit through that ice, and it was just an amazing experience. I think I had a very specific stereotype of what a young Coast Guard sailor would be like. Um, it was a very limited view before I went on that ship. Day one, my expectations and assumptions about who these people would be were totally tossed out the window. I met a bunch of young, uh, energetic, passionate uh, sailors who cared about the environment, who wanted to make a change in the world and they felt that by being in the Coast Guard and being a part of these missions, uh, they could do that. There's just so many different layers and levels uh, of the ship that kind of worked flawlessly because all these people knew exactly kind of what they were doing and, and believed in each other fully to make it happen. You know, it was just such an amazing, unique experience for me. As a storyteller, but just as a human, too. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. When you watch something on TV and it goes by in a half an hour, you don't normally think about all the time that people put into making that story. But after months of planning, weeks of filming, at the editing stage, we spent countless days with the help of Kara Condit and Dr. Zuchek. While we might have initially thought we were gonna follow the treatment, the ending film ended up completely different than what we started with. Just so proud that I was able to be a part of telling the story as well. I think uh, the U.S. Coast Guard's work with icebreakers, specifically with the Healy, is just really important. One of the things I hope people take away from the film is just an understanding of the legacy that the United States has in the polar regions and understanding the role that the polar regions play in science and understanding what's going on with our climate. I hope that people see this and it shows them that it's very important that the U.S. has a presence in the Arctic. Protecting our international waters and our fisheries and our natural resources to do climate change research. Things that matter not only to the United States but to the world. The only way that we can do that is with more icebreakers.